sometimes in life we just get stuck. We get in these ruts and these cycles and it's like, how do I get off this gerbil wheel and walk into the future that God has for me? Let's look at like Ruth. She's one of my heroes, one of the people that spoke so intensely into my life. Ruth was a person that God doesn't look at her past to determine her future. And the point that I really want to make to you today is that destiny doesn't happen overnight. It's not just one single step. It's many steps that take you into the future and into what God has promised you. And there are three things that I notice about Ruth. Number one, she had a continual ongoing work ethic and productivity. In other words, when she could have turned around, when Naomi was leaving and going back to Bethlehem, she could have gone back with her sister and said, nah, there's nothing in my future. I think I'll stay back in my comfort zone. But she kept on going. She, she laid down, you know, maybe what her dream was, her desire. She didn't know what she was getting into, honestly. And she went forth and she was diligent. The Bible says she happed on a field. In other words, Everything that she was being told to do, she just, she did it, which brings me to point number two. She had this obsession with doing good. See, her, her thing that got her into her future was, I believe if it's in your power to do good, do it. And she did good to Boaz. She did, she didn't just do good to Boaz. It seemed like it'd be easy to do good to Boaz. I mean, well, here comes Boaz. Everybody wants the Boaz. You know, this is the kinsman redeemer who's going to bring her in lineage to bring forth the Messiah. But she did good to Naomi. And Naomi had renamed herself Miss Mara. And Mara means bitter. She's following this bitter woman now. And she's always doing good. She isn't asking, well, what do I get for it? Will you give me an increase? Um, do I get a house for it? Are you going to give me, are you going to leave your will to me? It, it, it's not like this hidden agenda. She just was obsessed with making sure that she did her best and she gave her best. You see, there's nothing wrong. We shouldn't just, we shouldn't be abused or misused in any way. There should be healthy boundaries, but you do have to say, Hey, if it's in my power to do good, can I do it? it takes me back to my early beginnings when somebody gave me a turkey I didn't need the whole turkey. It was a lot. I was living in a trailer. I said, let me cut this turkey in half. And I'll take half of it for my son and I. And the other half I'm going down and I'm feeding the homeless. I was obsessed to do good. The third thing that you see here is she had an ongoing following of instruction. She, as I said, not only listened to the instruction of Boaz, but she listened to the instruction of Naomi. And, and Naomi gave her very specific things. I want you to go down and I want you to lay at the feet. I want you to take this. I want you to do that. And she could submit to authority. She was beautiful. She was strong, powerful, etc. She, like I said, she walks into her future because she took the right steps. There's a few things I wrote down I just wanted to ask you about. Number one, as you self-evaluate, are you willing to be productive? Because people think, oh, it just falls out of the sky. No. No man having put his hand to the plow and looks back, longs for the past, is even fit for the kingdom of God. We disqualify ourselves when we do that. The second thing I want you to ask yourself, maybe you write it down, take a little note right now. What has your, been your obsession? Are you obsessed with doing good? Because it has to become an obsession to you that every day you think, who am I going to give to? Who am I going to pray for? What am I going to do? God set me up. Send me somewhere. Let me stand at a 7-Eleven. Let me go on my job. Every single day, I determine to do good. And the third thing, you ready? It's not a cuss word, but can you really submit? You see, we say we can, but we don't know. It's illegal to have authority unless you're submitted to authority. And so we don't really know if we have a relationship of submission, which is not abusive. It's not being treated wrong or any way, but it's a, it's a divine order because God says, Nehemiah lines it all up. There's someone that you're holding their hand. There's someone back here. You're holding their hand. There's someone to your side. There's someone on your side. You should have all relationships in your life. Can I submit to that authority? Because if you can, Jesus submitted to the will of the father. Submission is not for your hurt or your harm. It's for your protection. It's actually because if you lower yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will raise you up in due season. So I just wanted to give you a few thoughts, a few things to think about. We can learn a lot from the life of Ruth. 
how to walk into our future.